Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy, and our first guest today is Steve Jufri with Lair Realty Partners out of Drakeit. Welcome to the show, Steve. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. So, Steve, you cover the Merrimack Valley and surrounding areas, correct? Correct. And you were telling me that you specialize in uh, in short sales in addition to working with regular buyers and sellers. Can you tell us a little bit about the new foreclosure prevention team at Lair? Sure. Um, so one of the things we're doing right now is uh, we established this team to try to reach out to homeowners that are going through foreclosure issues um, from all different ends. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the big things is, you know, it would be a short sale most likely. Um, sometimes that's not the case. It could also turn out to be a traditional sale. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not all we're trying to focus on. Um, ho- some homeowners that we are in talks with, they want to try to keep their property. Right. Um, and they don't get a lot of the options that they need or they don't hear a lot from um, other people that are reaching out to them about all these other options. Right. Um, so one of the options they could do is a loan modification with their mortgage company. Mm-hmm. Um, and we work with different attorneys um, that will reach out to their bank, mm-hmm. figure out what they need, and uh, try to work with the homeowner to do a loan modification to complete the package. And are the lenders still willing to do loan modifications? Because you just don't hear about it much anymore. Yeah, there are a lot of the lenders that will do it. Um, I want to say mostly some of the bigger banks. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are some banks that are also local that will do loan modifications um, and it's just the way that they can try to get most of their money back and right. they want to, you know. Right. Up. A lot of people don't realize the bank doesn't win on a foreclosure. It's so exactly. costly to do it. Yeah. Most times it does not, it's not covered even if there is some equity in the property. Yeah. And a lot of times with the foreclosures, you know, if it goes to auction, the auction price is going to be a lot lower than what they would get from whether they do a loan modification or even a short sale on the property. Right. Um, yeah. The auction sale prices are usually a lot lower and it will hurt the homeowner's credit a little bit more than it would on a short sale. Right, right. Uh, what other options do, do homeowners have available to them? Homeowners can also file for bankruptcy if they want. If they wanted to go mm-hmm. that route. Um, bankruptcies will help stop the foreclosure process, mm-hmm. um, and it gives them time to also work with the bank and uh, find ways that they can try to get back on payment and right. restructure their mortgage. Right. So the banks are in... Short, they're still willing to work with people to keep them in the houses. Correct. All right. I I assume they have to meet certain guidelines. You can't just call up and say, I can't make my payment anymore. Can you lower it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, loan modification, there's a huge package they have to go through. Mm -hmm. Um, They need to go over finances, see what's coming in, what they're spending, uh, what utility costs are. Um, And what will happen is, is they'll try to take some of that mortgage um that that's owed back out and they put it at the end of the loan mm-hmm. uh, and then they restructure the payment sometimes over th- another 30 years or to even sometimes 48 oh, okay um depending on the bank and what their terms are but they will go sometimes further out just to bring that mortgage payment wider mm-hmm. and the payments down do they lower the interest rate too or just extend the term depends sometimes they'll yeah. look you know if the interest rates are lower in general right now they mm-hmm. may lower them to try to get them on track but right um interest rates have been going back up so right we'll when they do lower them it's not usually permanent right it's usually for a couple of years or something like that yeah it's for a couple of years just okay. to kind of get them back on track and then right go over it from there so if you do get a modification you're eventually going to have to pay most if not all the money that you originally owed yes so most of it's the modification it does it'll add to the end of the loan what right. is um back owed onto right. the property but it's better than losing the house exactly obviously. yep and you get lower payments, so. Oh, excellent. Excellent. And then if, if loan modification is not an option, what, what are the next steps? Um, the next step, if a loan modification doesn't work, you know, would be an option for bankruptcy or they would go with a short sale or traditional sale if there's equity in the property. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times we see with some of these foreclosures is 90% of the time there really isn't a lot of equity. Right. Um, because the what's owed adds up, interest adds up. And they end up owing a lot more on the property than it's actually worth. I see. So it's not that that they were upside down from the start. It's just all of the the principal and interest they haven't paid basically eats up all their equity. Correct. I see. All right. I was wondering how you could still end up having short sales with the way prices keep increasing <laughs> year to year, but that, that actually makes a lot more sense. I actually just saw one recently where a seller was still in their home. They hadn't made a payment on principal interest taxes or insurance or any of the the town like uh water and sewer bills yep. 
and I think the total of all that stuff came out to like a hundred and ten thousand dollars that they they owed in back payments. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, there's yeah. people that we've talked to that they haven't paid a mortgage in two to three years. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them don't even live in the homes anymore. Right. Um, and they believe that you know when they move out, sometimes they think that they no longer have ownership in the property once they move out and get the you know the first letter right they think now the bank owns it and um unfortunately that's not the case the you know the homeowner is still in control they still own the property until right you know they sell it or the bank sells it yeah or until the bank at least takes possession takes of possession. it legally right yep uh what about um for people that are that are facing foreclosure um what other options do they have or you're just looking at straight out selling it otherwise? Um, otherwise, it would be straight out selling it. If they don't mm-hmm. go for a loan modification or they don't get approved for a loan modification um, or they don't choose not to do the bankruptcy route, um, that w- would be to sell the property. Okay. And are the banks willing to negotiate at all as far as, but let's say you're doing a short sale. Uh, do these people walk away with any equity at all or... On a short sale, no. So there's um, no incentive, like ten thousand dollars, to hand us the keys instead of going through the whole foreclosure process, or not really. It's hard to say too with, with mm. certain banks. Some banks you might be able to get a little something towards a relocation fee, mm-hmm. um, but that's very rare and uncommon nowadays. Yeah. Um. But you know, when you sell the property as opposed to letting the bank foreclose on you, um, it is going to help your. It doesn't help your credit score a hundred percent, but. Mm-hmm it does take less of an impact on your credit score than if you were to foreclose. Do you still have to stop paying the current mortgage to get them to consider doing a short sale? Um, no, I mean, you can do a short sale. If if you owe more on the property mm-hmm. than what the property is worth, you can do a short sale. Okay. Or you can at least try. Or try, yeah. yeah. And, you know, to the bank, if that they're going to look at that as, all right, well, we need to you know, take the short sale or we're not going to get any more right. money and right. lose out. Because I, I, back, uh, you know, a few years ago when it was a lot more prevalent, uh, the most banks would tell you, they, especially the big ones, don't even bother applying for a short sale until you're 90 days down. Oh, yeah. Um, or at least 30. A lot of them said if you don't stop making the payments, we'll assume you can keep making the payments. Yeah, I haven't ran into any yeah. of that yet. Well, that's good because the, the, the downside of that is if you go even one times 30, uh, as far as 30 days late, late on the mortgage, even if you sell it short, it's looked at the same as a foreclosure if you're late at the time of the sale. Yep. So it do, it certainly doesn't help you when it's time to buy another house. You got to no. wait a lot longer. Yeah, and we've we've been told, you know, seeing now that people that do a short sale on a property can usually buy again within two to three years, mm-hmm. um, as opposed to foreclosures, it could take up to seven to you know nine years before they allow you to buy again. Mm. Okay. So that does help a little bit with your uh, your credit there. Yes, yes it does. Uh what about uh bankruptcy? What are the options there? Uh you touched of, on that a little bit. Yeah, I'm not too too familiar with all the bankruptcy options at this point. I know um chapter 13 mm-hmm. um people that file for that it does allow them it will stop the foreclosure process. Mm-hmm. Banks can't foreclose on somebody when they are in a uh bankruptcy. Okay. Um I know for definitely that it's chapter 13. But, um, yeah, so once they're in that, you know, then they can start restructuring from there and working with the bank on right. trying to get their mortgage loan, you know, modified again. Right. Or so maybe it's like a second steps. step if the modification doesn't happen the first time, bankruptcy is kind of the next step. Yeah, it's a good way to okay. kind of stop the process, mm-hmm. you know, while they're trying to get things situated again and hmm. work on paying it back. Interesting. Interesting. Um, what do you find is causing short sales uh, these days? Is it people just upside down on the house or is it uh, something else upside down but a lot of days it's you know divorce um really? deaths in the family mm-hmm. um there's all different types of life instances right now that are happening that causes a short sale to happen gotcha you know a couple gets divorced one moves out one stays but they just lost half the income and they can't afford to pay for the property anymore right um that's been a big one sometimes an illness in the family medical bills you know, they start paying the medical bills and they start paying the mortgage. Um, mm. So, you know, a lot of people ask that question is, you know, is there still short sales out there with the market the way it is? Mm. And the answer is yes. Um, and there's always going to be short sales. I right. Mean, people aren't stopping getting divorced. People aren't stopping dying. So right. there's always going to be some type of. And we've seen that a lot process. too in divorce uh, situations where it's a bitter separation process and neither one of them wants to pay any of the bills so 
everything just kind of yep, exactly. falls and apart. Sometimes, too, it's both of them, both couples, both half move out, you know, and they get right. divorced. They both, One moves out, the other one moves out, and they just leave it to, you know, the house sitting there thinking that the bank's just going to take it. Right. Um, and, and it is a process. It does take a long time sometimes, in some cases. Um, I've talked to people that haven't lived in their house for four years, and they're just getting a petition of foreclose now. Right. Um, and unfortunately, during that that time frame that you're not living in the house, if anything was to happen inside the house, some with somebody falling or yeah. someone breaks in, the the homeowner will be liable for that, not the bank. Um, wow. The bank will take out does have insurance on if the house was to blow up, you know that mm-hmm. would be covered under the bank. Um, it's bank's insurance, but anything inside, if you know someone falls on the or even falls on the property outside personal liability is all on the homeowner right right and there's probably something else worth mentioning too because i think there's some misconceptions out there some people think well why am i going to go through the hassle of selling my house i'll just let the bank sell it for me and i'll get my money yep a lot of people don't realize if that happens you're likely going to get zero yes and most likely and the bank's going to get a lot less money at an auction mm-hmm. for the property than if you were to either try to traditionally sell it if there was equity right or you know doing a short sale the bank would actually get a little bit more money mm-hmm. um it would help your credit it would take off some of the liability um and also to help out with the neighbors too um, mm-hmm. a lot of people don't think about that right away you know if you're friendly with your neighbors you don't want to see their home values going down. Right. You know, a short sale will help that as well. Right. Do you ever see uh, maintenance issues, like people not a, not able to afford maintaining the home resulting in short sales as well? Yeah, there's a lot of times there's, you know, people will stop maintaining the property just because they can't afford it. Right. Um, and maybe they stop paying their mortgage as well because of that. Right. Um, but there'll be water damages. and mm. So you your value is getting eroded and your principal balance keeps going up. Exactly. And um, so in the property, when we list it as a short sale, you know, we try to, we list it as a sold as is property. Mm-hmm. Um, we try to make it so that way the homeowner is, you know, doesn't need to have any out-of-pocket expenses because... If you're going into a short sale, most likely there's a reason for that. And mm-hmm. usually, you know, you don't have the money to spend on the property. So right. we're not going to ask you to spend anything. Right. Uh, going into general real estate, uh, how are you seeing the market out there right now with respect to inventory? Uh, the market's crazy. I mean, um, not a lot out there right now on the market. Um, but the stuff that's going on, it's, you know, it's getting sold pretty quickly. You have to act fast. Um, Mm -hmm. I just, you know, put an offer in on a property recently and, you know, we went 9,000 over asking price and it was still outbid by somebody else. How high was the asking price? Um, it was one, 184. So you basically bid 5% over and you still didn't win. Still didn't win. And you Um, said your buyers were pretty flexible too, as far as closing dates and. Exactly. We were willing to line up all our dates with the sellers on purchase when they're purchasing their new property. Mm -hmm. You know, we would line up all the dates with what needed to fit for them. Um, And like I said, 9,000 over and it was still just outbid by someone else, just a little bit right above us. Wow. Um, Yes. I mean, the market's crazy. I've been working with this buyer for a little while and one of the other ones we got outbid by about 30 grand. 30 grand. Wow. And these are for condos. Condos are. Wow. Are getting up there. Yeah. It seems like it's the last thing people can really afford. Prices have gone up so much. Exactly. Prices keep going up. Condos are a little bit cheaper still. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're get, they're going up. Wow. That's that's crazy. What about best places to buy if you're trying to stretch your, your budget as far as purchase price in um, Merrimack Valley? Merrimack Valley. I mean, right now, Lowell isn't too, too bad. Um, some of the prices are starting to go up in Lowell too, with, you know, UMass Lowell taking over. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we are seeing some increases, but there are still parts of Lowell that, you know, you can still get a good, good property for what you can afford. Right. Um, it's going to be better than the surrounding areas. It's going to be better than the surrounding areas. And, you know, there are going to be a little bit of fixer uppers that mm-hmm. you're going to need. Um, and same thing with Drake it. Drake it isn't, you know, a bad area to purchase in right now either. Right. So if you're willing to go a little further off the highways, you can save a little money, basically? Yeah, a little yeah. further away from the, the high commuter yeah. uh, traffic and stuff like that. You can kind of save a little bit more money. Right. Uh, as far as the economy, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're seeing on the, the buying and selling side of things, but with rates we've seen relatively stable, but it seems like the better the economy does, the more buyers you have out there. You already have a, a reduced inventory. It just seems like everything's kind of fallen into place for it to just keep getting worse every year. Are you seeing more yeah. or less the same? 
I mean, it, it's it's one of the, it's definitely a seller's market right now, mm-hmm. and if you're looking to sell now, is definitely the time to do it. Um, and for buyers, you know, it, it's a it's hard to buy right now, but it is a good time because I do believe the rates are going to start going up with the way the yes. market is. Um, yeah. And you know, you want to buy now with with the rates being low, but you do got to be careful that it is a seller's market out there, and they're getting top money for their property. Right. Now, traditionally, this time of year, going into the we're about to go into the fall and what the next month or so, um, do you see things start to pick up on the the listing side of things now towards I, the end of the summer? Or? I think you'll start seeing some stuff now towards the end of the summer, um, especially now that you know kids are going, everyone's going back to school. So the people that are looking to sell, will, I think, will start selling now that you know there are vacations and mm-hmm. you know things are starting to quiet down for them. They'll uh, start looking to sell. Hmm. Okay, good. I uh, just want to give out some information on you again. It's Steve Jufri with Lair Realty Partners in Dracut, serving the Merrimack Valley and all surrounding areas. You can reach Steve anytime at 978-942-3496. Again, it's 978-942-3496. Steve works with buyers and sellers, and he specializes in uh, foreclosure prevention and working with uh, homeowners facing foreclosure. Uh, Steve, I want to thank you for joining us today. It was great having you in. No problem. Thank you very much for having me. You're you're very welcome. Uh, We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more Get Real after these messages. (laughs) 